Yes, then the signs and the definition of the route and the maps that have been provided. If the person follows those, then inshallah he will get to Allah. But if the individual says, no, I'll follow my own thinking and my shortcuts and I'll follow my opinions and my thoughts and he tries to get to Allah, and then he'll be like us, that person, the poor soul. Yeah, broken down. Forget about getting to Allah, he gets to another place. Yes, and he thinks he is in the right and I'm doing the right thing. Remember this asool that we are all mashallah musafirs, journeymen on this path. So if we want to get to Allah, my friends, then take hold of this principle and solidify it. That the roadmap, the route that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through the Quran and through the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has given us this path, defined it, then don't leave that route. Don't leave that way and you will not go astray. And you will not go astray. The question doesn't arise that you don't get to the point. This is the asul, the principle. The world tells us this. And you are um, assisting those who are against Allah. And you are going against Allah as well. He said, how comes this? He said, this is the way. That when the human being, if he disobeys Allah's hukam order, which we call sin, a sin is to disobey Allah's order, then when a person sins, he's challenging Allah. He's competing against Allah. We don't know this, do we? That when a human being like me, for example, if I say to someone, do this, he says, no, I don't do this. And then he goes against what I'm telling him. Then is he not challenging me? He's challenging me, isn't it? So in the same way, if Allah Ta'ala says, keep your bed, and I don't keep the bed, then I'm not challenging Allah. Allah says, pray salah. And I don't pray salah. Am I not challenging Allah? Allah Ta'ala says, that do parda, women. And they don't do parda. Are they not challenging Allah? What else is challenging Allah? These are all sins. Allah is ordering us. Allah is ordering us that leave music and singing and leave uh, uh, immodesty and leave the action of no parda and improve your faces. Is Allah Ta'ala not giving us this hukum? Or is Allah not giving this hukum? Do we all accept this? Then, then why if we don't implement this, then are we not challenging Allah? We are. So what has this been attached to? Who is our friend? Our nafs, our desires is our friend at the moment. Allahu Akbar. And the person who is the enemy, which is the nafs, that we have made our friends. And when we make friendship with those who oppose Allah, and when a person goes towards a sin, then he is standing in front of Allah and he's fighting against Allah. He's challenging Allah. He is so, he's daring the insan. Imagine, he's so bold. He's in such a worse position at that time. The Allah Ta'ala sometimes has said that in the form of him being Allah Ta'ala shown, Allah has told us in the Qur'an, those people of Fir'aun, 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 Allah Ta'ala has given us a who follows his own opinions and thoughts and challenges Allah, nafs pras, in no way or form can he get close to Allah, and he can never be successful, never. A person who worships his desires can never be successful. The prime condition, the premium condition is we have to leave disobeying Allah, we have to leave challenging Allah, we have to make enemies with our nafs, say subhanallah, subhanallah. We follow our nafs, we worship our desires, we try, we do dhikr, we do actions, but we cannot get close to Allah through these actions, not through tasbis. no. We cannot get close to Allah through tasbis. Allah Ta'ala doesn't come near due to tasbis, not from dhikr. How do we get close to Allah? How? By opposing the desires. When your nafs stands in front of you and takes you away from Allah. Yes, what a great, solid. This is our enemy, strong enemy, the nafs. That is not a minus enemy. Who does he make enmity with? Allah. Who does he make a stand up against? Allah, our Rabb, our Creator. Can anyone imagine for a second? Fir'aun. Allah Ta'ala didn't make him a lanati person. His lash is still there. His body. What an example. That everyone who worships his desires... Allah says, if you worship your desires and you compete against me, Allah says, you challenge me, you dissuade me, then you are Fir'aun. And Fir'aun's example is that how I destroy him. Allah says, I, I made him drown in the oceans. And every man who worships his desires, he is destroyed in the oceans and the seas. When Allah Ta'ala takes the revenge on that person, Allah definitely, Allah will never forgive any Fir'aun. Any Fir'aun. No Fir'aun is forgiven ever. That's it. So this one point, Allah Ta'ala says, that Nabi al Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sadqa upon us, that we are in his ummah. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu charity upon us, His, His, His mercy upon us, that Allah gives us time, time, Allah tells us, send us to gatherings, to dhikr, makes us a good things, that if He gets akal now, and He goes on the right path, becomes a good human, this is Allah's mercy, He gives us chances. But when a person is staunch, 
And arrogant, no, 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 I don't want to do good deeds. I want to fight against Allah and oppose Allah. He becomes arrogant and stubborn. Every sinful man and woman, when a man or woman sins, then he's challenging Allah. She's challenging Allah. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or wrong? 